Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 32. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We do have several different tiers available, including a free one. Make sure you check it out, links in the description below. Now, as always, I, I would be remiss to remind you that while it is called Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, we're talking about the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization. And as of February 1st, 2023, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a, at a modest 1.04 trillion compared to the fair value logarithmic regression trend line of 1.87 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 44%. Now remember the reason we use this type of chart is to show when we're undervalued and when we're overvalued as a function of time. When we're overvalued, it might often feel like we're not because there's so much momentum, there's so many new people coming into the space, but history shows us that we do eventually go back down to the undervaluation territory. And in the same way, when we're undervalued, it might feel like we'll never go back to the overvaluation territory. But once again, history shows us that eventually we do. Now, one of the reasons why I like this chart is because we can see the length of time that Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency asset class as a whole can spend in the undervaluation or overvaluation regimes. For instance, back in 2015, we entered into the undervaluation territory and did not leave it until close to mid-2017, or approximately two and a half years. In 2019, or late 2018, we entered into the undervaluation regime. And while we poked our hat above it a little bit in 2019, it was, it was more or less a, a false breakout. And we continued to stay below it until about late 2020. So all in all, the undervaluation territory, we get quite comfortable in it. And we can spend a couple years in that range before having a realistic chance of getting back above the fair value logarithmic regression trend line in a sustained way. Now, remember... This is a monotonically increasing function. So the idea is that as a function of time, the fair value of the cryptocurrency asset class will ultimately trend higher. One of the things to also note here is that right now, where we are, again, we're at 1.04 trillion. And this represents an undervaluation of approximately 44%. But we could still be in undervaluation territory for the entirety of 2023. Now, if we if we get a nice rally like we got in 2019, then it's possible we can get back above it in the short term. But I would say to go into this year with the expectation that the asset class as a whole is going to be in the undervaluation regime would probably be the best way to go into this year just to keep your expectations in check um, and to just sort of be patient and, and recognize that as we get further out in time, like say the 2024, 2025 timeframe, then perhaps we will see uh, more, you know, more favorable monetary conditions, um, and and perhaps more in, more clarity on on exactly how cryptocurrency is going to be treated uh, in a in a sort of from the regulations point of view. So again, today we still sit undervalued. We sat undervalued last month and the month before that, and really we have been undervalued since about yeah, maybe about mid 2022 when we had that initial capitulation in June where Bitcoin went down to 17.5K, Ethereum went below $1,000. And ever since then, we've more or less just been sort of humming along um, on more or less similar valuations, right? I mean, I, I know it certainly feels like a lot has happened between now and, uh, and, and, and June of 2022, but in the grand scheme of things, the, the market hasn't really done a whole lot. If you look at this chart, you'll notice that we've had three clear peaks uh, where we hit the upper logarithmic regression trend line. But you also notice that in the last cycle, we did not. We actually had sort of two more intermediate peaks, somewhat similar to 2013, but the second peak was, was sort of fell short of the, of the higher logarithmic regression trend line. And arguably due in part to the quickly deteriorating macroeconomic conditions, um, which is something we've, you know, we've continued, we've started to really focus on here in 2022 and 2023. But it's also a reminder that when it comes to crypto, the, the, typically, the best strategy that I've found is, is not trying to time the bottom, not trying to time the top, but to slowly enter the market when it feels or it seems like the market is undervalued, 
Uh, and you can use that undervaluation metric any way you want, whether you're using this metric or some other metric that you're looking at. And then to scale out of the market when it's overvalued. Now, of course, it's going to be difficult oftentimes to scale out of the market when it's overvalued because, I mean, you're, you're going to have tons of people pouring in and, and saying it, it's crazy to sell. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, these are the types of rallies that you want to sell into. Um, and I mean, in, in, 2020, in 2021, this was basically where, you know, this is where most of my sales occurred. Uh, not on the second top. I was I was actually hoping it would go a bit higher. So a majority of mine came from the first one, not the second one. And that's why I say oftentimes, like, never let a good bubble go to waste. You don't know when they're going to occur. It's certainly not back then. A lot of us did not know that we were about to go up to sixty-four thousand um, dollars. But if and when it happens, you you, ne you simply never want to let a good bubble go to waste. You don't know when they're going to occur, and and you sort of have to do away with these you know these price predictions that that are often flooded into the market of bitcoins going to a certain valuation whether it be you know 100k or 200k or whatever it might be at the end of the day you know that that stuff is is, is largely irrelevant okay you have to you have to look at, at at a lot of other things not just a price prediction um based on on dubious speculation at best right so the other thing i wanted to talk about is if you take the percent difference between the fair value or sorry, between the total market cap, which is the white line, and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, which is the which is the red line, you'll get a chart that looks like this. And again, you'll see how we tend to come back down into this deeply undervalued territory that has historically gone all the way down to, you know, 65% undervalued, 60 to 65% undervalued, somewhere, you know, somewhere in that ballpark, right? Somewhere in that in that ballpark. And what's interesting is, is you can see where we where sort of we remain in that area now. Now we could go lower, and 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 I want to explain what I mean by that. It could mean two things, right? So the way you go lower on the undervaluation chart is you either the price drops, right? Because if the price drops, then we get more undervalued if it drops quickly enough, or or even if it doesn't, right? If it just if it's just dropping because the because the reference point monotonically increases, if it's dropping, the fair value, the undervaluation is going down. Or if you just go sideways, okay. So if if we were to go sideways for another year, we would eventually hit this lower green trend line. You can kind of see that's what happened over here in 2015 to 2016, and also what happened over here from 2019 to early 2020. We just sort of went sideways for a long time until we hit it. And you might say, well, why would we become more undervalued just by going sideways? The reference point is changing. Right? So the reference point continues to change. So then that's why, despite the fact that March of 2020 was technically a higher price for Bitcoin, it wasn't a higher price for all cryptocurrencies, but the fair value was much higher. And so we were much more, we were more deeply undervalued in March of 2020 than we were in December of 2018, just because the, you know, the rate at, at, at at the fair value increasing, it was, it was so much higher than it should have, than it was back in December of 2018, that it made sense we were more undervalued. And it was from that point that, that we actually went on a, a nice bull market uh, that took us up to like, you know, 400% or so overvalued with respect to the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. So then, you know, you look at it right now, and, and again, we're coming in about 44% undervalued or so. Um, you know, if you look at it like this, you'll notice that we haven't really gotten down to the, the very deep undervaluation territory to the tune of like 65% undervalued, 60 to 65% undervalued. It doesn't mean it has to come. There's an example over here in 2011 and 2012 where it never came. But there's always a chance, right, that we just continue either going sideways and the fair value gets further away, therefore the undervaluation gets more, or we see lower prices and, and we go back down into the undervaluation or deeper undervaluation, undervaluation territory. So again, two different scenarios to actually get you to that mark. And if you do something like that, then, you know, it would essentially... It would essentially mean um, hitting this green lower regression trend line at some point in the future, right? Could happen tomorrow, could happen six months from now, could happen a year and a half from now. We never really know, but history shows us that hitting that trend line is is typically uh, not the worst place to get into the market, whether it's at a lower price or not, or whether we just go sideways for another year and then it, it's at that same level um, is obviously is obviously unknown, but just wanted to provide this update on the total crypto market cap 
and Trendline, and I, I do hope it is, is valuable to everyone in terms of navigating the cryptoverse. So in undervaluation territories, it's you know generally better to slowly scale in, and overvaluation territories it's generally better better to scale out. But you always you also have to be careful in undervaluation territories because it's always about what do you scale into. Um, plenty of cryptocurrencies will never go back to their all time highs, and, and that's a common mistake I, I see a lot of newcomers make is you know assuming that just because something's down 95, 98 percent means that it'll go back to new all time highs, and um, you know you'll make a lot of money that way. That, that is, you know, you have to remember the market cap can go back up because because the blue chips are going back up and all the new shiny objects for the next cycle are going up with it. Not because a relic of a prior cycle that potentially has outdated technology compared to what's been created in the last in the last bear market has. So just remember that you, you have to be careful as to which ones you actually get. Not all of them will put in new all time highs. And I would argue most of them will not put in new all time highs. The blue chips, of course, are are. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, and and then you can take your picks beyond that. This is just my opinion, not financial advice. But just remember, there are plenty of altcoins that will not go to all-time highs. So don't rely on the asset class as a whole to to sort of get you out of of um, uh, of of a portfolio that's down a lot. If you're just simply holding on to a lot of micro caps that that might just be forgotten in the cryptoverse by the next uh, by the next bull market. So hopefully, again, hopefully this video is as useful. And I, as I've said many times, right, I, I would like to see the overall market cap eventually hit 10 trillion. Whether it happens next cycle is is probably going to be dependent on on a lot of the the macroeconomic conditions. For instance, if inflation were to come back in a in a significant way in the next like two years or so, then it, it we could have a similar effect where we don't quite make it up to as high as we could achieve. Um, but if it doesn't, then of course we have a, a much more realistic chance. But again, the, the goal is for us to see crypto hit ten trillion dollars by market capitalization, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. We have Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. See you guys next time. Bye.